again today. I always look forward to this time. Today we are going to be creating a very fun print making project. So this is going to be so unique, so individual to you, and there's a number of different things that you can use to put your um, your printing to make your block on that you'll do your printing. You can use a styrofoam plate. Um, you will need to just cut out the middle of it so that you get a good flat piece. It's going to need to be flat. Uh, you can use a meat tray um, as long as you clean it really good with some Lysol or, or bleach and um, cut it out to where you can have a good flat area. You can use that. Or you can use um, like a project foam board like you would use for a science fair project to put your stuff on. So you can use that as well. That's some, some foam in there. Um, you can print this on any type of paper. You can use construction paper, card stock, regular paper. It can be any color of paper that you want it to be. Um, you can use paint. And if you feel like you're working with your paint and it might be a little too thick, you notice you can't really, if your paint's kind of getting caught in your indentions where you are making your print, then just add a little bit of water to it and mix it in really good just so that you can um, make it a little bit thinner if you need to. Um, and then to make do your engraving. You can use, especially if you're using a paper or styrofoam plate, they're kind of thin. So you might not want to use um, a toothpick. Switch. You might not want to use a toothpick because it's kind of sharp and it might puncture a hole in your paper plate or styrofoam plate because it's thin. A toothpick would work good with the meat tray or your foam board. Um, so you can do it with that. You can use a pencil that's been sharpened, but that's not too, too sharp and pointy. Uh, or you can use the end of a paintbrush. Um, so you can use that as well. Um, a hint. If you are going to do words or letters or anything like that, when you print, it's going to end up being just to show you. It'll end up being mirror image to what you engrave. So I engraved this. This says thank you and it's written backwards. So when you get ready to print it, your piece will be a mirror image of what you engraved and created so that you'll be able to read it correctly. So if you need help doing something like that, you can get a piece of tissue paper and you can write your word or however you want to on your tissue paper and then you can turn it over and tape it down on whatever piece you're using for your block and then that way you can see it and it'll be this is the way you need to engrave it kind of backwards or a mirror image of the correct word so that it will work out um, you can create a thank you card, a thank you note. You can create just pieces of art that you can hang up and frame. And the good thing about printing with this is you can create it and do it and think, oh, I really wish I had something else in there. You can go back and add to it. You can add multiple colors to the same block. You can, um, you can create a hundred or so different print pieces and you only had to use one styrofoam block. So you, this is an endless project. You can keep on using it, keep on creating with it. Um, you can make a card for someone. You can just give them a picture, send them something, and, uh, and just enjoy, enjoy creating. And just remember to have fun with this, that it's more about the process and not the end product and I just really want you to have fun. Um, I know I've said this before but don't let art stress you out. I don't want you to be stressed or worried or think that it's not good enough. I just want you to enjoy the process. Um, so that's, that's what I really want you to do with these right here. 
So, like I said, if you are using a plate and you need to tape your piece down, you can tape it down. So this is, I'll do this love. So have it, I'm gonna just turn it over so that I can see the back side the way that it needs to be. I'll make sure that it's in the center good. And then just tape that down. Tape it down in place. And then that way you can see it and you can go over it with your pencil. So you'll start to go over and trace it or if you didn't do anything like this and you're just kind of doing freehand on, on your block. Just do that. Make sure that, like I said, you, you want to bear down and get a good indention. Um, a good way to tell is if you've got it good and indented enough is that you'll be able to feel it. So if you rub your finger over it and you can feel really good, then you've got it indented really good enough. So you want it to be um, a good deep indention, but you don't want it to puncture through your uh, foam piece and make a hole in it. Um, and if it does, that's all right. It's all right, you can use that. That'll just be part of your print, part of your artwork. So I really just want you to have fun with this and enjoy it. And make sure you're going to want to check to make sure if you take your piece of tissue paper off, you might need to go over some spots again just to make sure that they did get deep enough. rub your finger over it, make sure you can feel it good. And when you get ready to do your painting and your printing, make sure that you lay down something to protect your surface area. You're going to want to keep that clean if you can. And then you're going to, you can use a paintbrush, a, a big fat paintbrush, a sponge brush. If you have like a, a ink roller, you can use that. So you're just going to want to get it covered. You can cover the whole thing and have like a circle print or you can do just one certain area of it. So let's see. We're going to just paint over it good, get it good and covered with whatever colors you choose. You can add multiple colors to the same piece. Do it, give it a rainbow look if you want to, or just whatever colors you want to use. So after you've got your styrofoam block covered with your paint, you're going to get your paper and you'll lay your block down on top of it. And to make sure that you get good coverage and you get a good transfer of the paint from your styrofoam to your paper, you're going to want to make sure that you use something to press down really good everywhere, um, like a round glass or a candle holder. If you have a rolling pin for baking or you have your ink roller, as long as you don't have any ink or anything on this side, you can just... Go over it really good. Make sure you get it good and covered. And then you'll peel that off and you'll see love. Now if you look at this and think, oh, I wish I would have put a heart on this, you can always go back and add to it. So we can go back and put a heart on here.
Get it good and covered. And let's see what I'll do. I'll do it down below here. You'll lay your print down over it. And you'll get something to make sure you get your good coverage all over. And there we go. I might have seen, I can look at this and think, oh, I pressed down really, really heavy right there. So I need to kind of lift up or make sure that I do even everywhere all over it instead of just in the same area. You can... Fold it, like I said, you can create a card for somebody. You can create a card. Let's see here, this says thank you. We'll create one with that. If somebody did something for you, or you can, don't even have to, it doesn't have to be thank you to be a card to give to somebody. You could make a birthday card. Uh, anything that you wanted to. And like I said, any colors, any way you wanted to do it. So get it good and covered. Then you'll lay your card down with your print block. Make sure that you go over it really good. I'll use this roller this time. So if you have a rolling pin, that would definitely give it some good even coverage. So you can roll it with that. Or if you had a really big heavy book you wanted to lay on top of it for a minute, then you'll peel that off and you'll have your thank you card you can send to somebody. And like I said, the thing is you'll have just one block print and you can create a number, any number of different pieces of artwork with it. So um, you can keep adding to it. You can use different colors. Um, so let's say I... Now I wanted to do white on um, like a darker piece of paper. So I'll put that out and make sure you get a clean brush. So I'm, if I'm going to change colors, I don't want to use this paintbrush with blue in it. So um, you can wash your brush out or, you know, get another one or try the, a roller if you had a roller. And then you'll just roll over it, get it good and covered. And if you feel like that your paint, like I said, is a little thick and you need to add just a little bit of water to it to thin it out some, you can do that. Add just a little bit of water to it. And then it won't be so, so thick getting caught in stuck in your indention areas and everything. So just roll it over really good, get good coverage on there. And then, so I see right here, it looks like I got a lot in this area right here. I'll just take my pencil and dig in there and clean that out a little. Any area that you see like that, just you can clean it out a little. Or if you don't, that'll be okay too. So you'll get your paper. You'll lay it down. And you'll get your good transfer on this. There's just, it's endless what you can do with this printmaking. So you can create and just have fun with it. Have fun. 
So I think they turn out really good, and it's it's just fun. I always enjoy making print making blocks, and everything is fun. Next week, we can come together and create um, a pinwheel. So we are going to create pinwheels next week. Come together and create with us, and you'll need a pencil that's got an eraser on it, um, some thumbtacks, coloring utensils, scissors, and any size square paper. It can be a 4-inch square, an 8-inch square, just any size square paper. But um, So I look forward to seeing you next week as we come together and create our pinwheels. Thanks!